Hey, welcome back. We're continuing our conversation from today's show here online at AndersonCooper.com. Uh, we all know there's a lot riding on getting into college. The pressure to do well on standardized tests can be greater for kids with ADHD. I want to introduce you to two teenagers who are in the audience today uh, who are dealing with this in, in different ways. Uh, Jennifer, are you Jennifer? Yes. Hey, Jennifer, stand up. So, um, do you take you take AD, AD, uh, you take uh, medication? I did. You did. I did. A couple of years ago, I don't anymore. You're you're 17 now. Yes. Um, what impact did it have on you when you were taking it? Well, I did. I was. Um, there were some side effects. I didn't want to eat ever when I was on the medication, and that led to, in part, to be to me being anemic. Mm -hmm. um, I also didn't feel like myself. It was. It kind of made me like. A zombie, like they said. A lot of kids with ADHD have trouble focusing on a standardized test. How do you deal with that now? Well, you have to take the extra time to just refocus if you get sidetracked. And I do that, and it works. So you, do you, so you request extra time yes. when taking standardized yes. tests? And schools are, are, are allowing that? Yes. Okay. So instead of medication, you're saying you take extra time on yeah. the test. All right, cool. Thank you. Um, Sydney? Hey. Welcome. Thanks. Uh, you're also 17? Yes, I am. Now, you, uh, do you, you don't take the med medication all the time? No, I don't take it anymore. You don't? The only time I take it is for ACT, like that kind of stuff. For like standardized tests? Yes, and for like exams, but I don't take it any other time. So you actually take the medication just for when you have to focus on a test? Yes. Do you, and you really notice a difference? Yeah, I just, I stopped taking it though because I didn't like the way it made me feel. I didn't, I, like she said, I never ate. I just felt very reserved, very shy, and that's not who I am. And I didn't like that I wasn't myself anymore. Mm -hmm. So I only take it when it, like, it really matters, so. Interesting. Uh, Dr. Jensen, what about that? I mean, is that a, a wise way to, to deal with this as a teen? Well, Thanks. I do think there's always the possibility of, of side effects, like she pointed out. A child might notice it uh, st uh, blunts the appetite or changes their sparkle, and that can be important. It only lasts as long as the medicine is there. So we always encourage the individualization of the medicine. Often we might say during the school, but maybe not on weekends. These are some of the ways that we like to think of managing it. Kimberly? We did that with Dakota. Um, he saw a difference in the way he felt and um, he would start to get that flat, what I call flat affect. And um, that's when we knew that wasn't the right medication for him. He could tell us, we had a dialogue. This wasn't just something that we said, you have to take this. He, we had a conversation and we talked regularly about how it made him feel and he would tell us. And we've even said, you know, you don't have to take it during the summer or whenever. And he wants to take it. It's something that he wants to do. He knows it makes him feel better, and it's a choice that he makes as much as we make it. Doctor, do people grow out of ADHD? Uh, some, maybe about as many as half of folks will, but for many adults, the attention difficulties and even some of the impulsivity remain. They may have, dri you know, we know these kids, and then as adults, have more driving problems, get fired more. It's harder not to tell your boss off, how for example. You, so I have a question for Lori. How are you ensuring that your son stays competitive once he gets out to the workplace, for example, like uh, reporting to work on time, making sure that he works well with others now that you've unschooled him? Um, I don't want my son to be competitive and take his place in society. My, my, I want my son to be happy. My son actually is already living his life. He's not waiting to live it in the future. He's a performing musician. His passion is to be a musician. He already has his own CD out. He, cut, he recorded a CD in the studio. Um, he, he's already living his dream. He was running a business at age 12. He's already been a businessman. He, he makes and sells chain mail, and he makes money doing this. So he's already making a living. He's already doing this. I don't want my son to have to conform to somebody else's schedules. I want my son to be happy. That is my only desire for my son. Okay. I think that in, in, as far as you're concerned with the whole homeschooling, I think that there's some people who are out there that are meant to teach, and they have the patience and the, the will and the desire to teach. And then there's some that aren't, and they can't connect with people, and they don't know how to explain things properly. Yeah, or I got to say, I'm glad my mom did not try to homeschool me, because 
I mean, and I'm sorry, but I have I have to say, if you want the best thing for your kid and you know that you're not a good teacher, this whole homeschooling thing for everyone in the world, woo, it's just not going to work. I'm sorry. Did you think people did for a thousand of years. Oh, sorry, Lori, what, what, did, what do you want to say? I said, what what do you think people? How do you think people raise their children for thousands of years? Every mammal raises their own young. I mean, I don't right, understand. Right, but, but I mean, I'm telling you I'm point blank. Right. My mom, who didn't graduate high school, I would not want her educating me. But she shouldn't be educating you. You should be educating yourself. That's the whole point well, of right, unschooling. Right, but at, at age nine, I really shouldn't be educating myself. Yes, you my, absolutely I, I, should. Well, Everybody I'm glad I went to school. Equipped. But I'm glad it works. I'm glad. I'm Bryson seems like a great kid. I'm glad it's working for him because clearly it seems to be. You're you're actually an educator. Yes, uh, and as as a teacher, I actually really do like your idea of this um, unschooling, student-directed learning. But we have had teachers for thousands of years, and we do ha no have people who specialize in this. And I believe in the power of public education and in teachers. And and I think that you, you are absolutely right. We do need to rethink what we're doing as teachers, how we cater to individual students, because they are not standardized. And I'm asking you, like, how can teachers in our education system cater more to individual students? Do you have, I mean, uh, do you feel like you know what to look for for kids who may have ADHD or, or issues? I mean, I, I feel that we could receive more training on that. Um, I do work with a lot of students also who work with standardized tests. And I myself struggle with ADD, and I'm the product of a wonderful single mom household. And I know that that is not an option to have homeschooled me all of those years. Right. Um, so I, I think that we do need to find a way to work with the system that we have. Right. Yeah, no, I, I mean, I, I understand the argument of saying we're over medicating kids in this country. This country, you know, gives kids more medication than any other country. But I also understand the argument, and, and from what I'm hearing, which is that to make blanket statements on either side seems naive. To say, you know, we're over medicating our kids and no kid should have medication, or to say, you know, all these kids should have medication. It seems like the truth is somewhere in the middle, no? We, no, oh, we I found, agree totally. I, yeah. Everything I've heard in here today, we've just about experienced some portion of that. We went through the zombie state. We went through the not eating, all of that. We, you know, we worried. But we found the right thing, and he excels. And we and, found... You know, that's part of it. But I'll say, as a parent, the first thing... Because we first looked at ourselves... It was not the child. We first looked at ourselves. Where are we failing? And the first thing you need to do is ask for help. That's the hardest thing to do. But it's the first thing you need to do is go find help and try to get answers and go right down the road. We actually looked at homeschooling, too. I tried to talk Kimberly into doing homeschool. Well, I, come, I come from a family <laughs> yeah. of teachers, and I did not get the teaching gene she somehow. She not a teacher. <laughs> I did not get that gene. You know, I have three sisters that teach, a brother that taught. Both my parents were teachers and coaches, and I didn't get the gene somehow, and it was not yeah. something that I could thought was possible for me. So it was not an option for us, and the best thing we can do is provide our kids with the tools to manage life, or life's going to manage them. So that's just that's what it boils down to. I mean, what, what I love about having you both here, but Lori and, and, and Kimberly and Trent, is that you both clearly love your kids and, Absolutely. you know, have figured out ways that work best for your kids. And, um, you know, I, I think your kids are blessed to have you guys as parents because Thank you. there's a lot of kids out there who don't have that. Um, and, and Lori, I think, I think it's what's really cool about you is that you have found these incredibly creative ways to foster creativity in Bryson. Mm -hmm. And as you said, it, it has come from him. I mean, these are things which he is genuinely interested in, yeah. and you figured out a way to make it work for, for him. I think and that's I, amazing. And I want you to understand this works for any, almost any child. I'm only saying almost because, you know, yes, the parent-child connection is absolutely paramount. That's got to be first. And then the child needs to be in a learning environment that meets his or her needs. Doesn't have to be unschooling. And I'm not advocating for school at home. That's not what I'm advocating for. I'm advocating for unschooling, which is free learning. The child needs to have his or her needs met. That is the key here. It's not about this box or that box. It's about what does the child need. Not, not fitting the child into a school's 
right. box. I'd love to do a whole show on unschooling because I think it's, it's a cool idea yeah. and an interesting idea. And frankly, we'd love to have you back to, to do that because it's, it's, I mean, there's so much in the education system that, that needs change. Uh, I want to ask this to, to all of you on the stage. Is there anything that we didn't get to that you think we should? Lori? Did you want to? Or, or Kimberly? I want to point out that yeah. I have two kid children. Sierra is 14. Dakota's 13. They couldn't be more polar opposites. And um, Sierra's here also sitting next to Dakota. Hey. <laughs> so they couldn't be more polar opposites. And Sierra is always excelled in school, always been the social, bu social butterfly. Dakota was more reserved uh, socially. But then you add in the hyperactivity, you could see they came from the same parents. There's no denying that Dakota is different and that the issues need to be addressed. It's not something I made up. I didn't say, okay, I think my child has this. You look at them, they're totally different. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not something that I said, oh, I, I think you need some medication to be better. So, you know, kids are different. And medication was last resort. It was the last thing we did. Yeah. It was the absolute last Dr. resort. Jackson. Well, uh, just two quick comments. One is, I think it's really important just to remember, this is an area so, with so much stigma. People call it drugging your kid rather than medicating. We don't say drugging for diabetes or drugging for asthma. You're drugging your kid for asthma. So it's really important to pull that out of this conversation because there's a lot of misunderstanding about how the brain works. The second point is, I, I think every parent would be a great thing to do, is to Talk with your doctor. Find out how much they know. Are they up to date on the latest science? Uh, and that's one of the things that is so with, if you go to the doctor, he may, he may be two decades out of date. And that's too late for a growing child. And that's kind of the whole strong emphasis from both Mayo, where I work, as well as at the REACH Institute. So push on that, because the change will come from families. Yeah. Lord? And I want you to understand, this is a multi-billion dollar industry, this uh, psycho farm of children. They are a captive hostage audience. Teachers want them subdued. My son's public school teacher, before, I, before he came to live with me, I actually met all the collaterals in his life before he, he actually came into my life. The teacher said, I understand he's only 68 pounds because he's not eating, but it's easier on the teacher when he's medicated. Mm. That was his actual oh. quote. <laughs> Yeah. The teacher and, actually said that to you. The teacher actually said that, and I, because I let the teacher know that he would be unschooling and that we would be removing him immediately. The polarization, the splitting into all this or all that, is very important because it happens with clinicians like Lori or with me, and doctors are the same way. You have yeah. an experience, and then you're sold on that experience versus some going to another door to get sold on another experience. Let the buyer beware. Make sure your doctor's trained in the science, not just in their own experience. Yeah. It's it so true. Work. I listen to anything my doctor says. I'm such a sucker. Like, I <laughs> literally, I, I a, assume he's the expert, and I frankly don't even know who this person is. So and it's, I should probably and check. It, and it's important also to understand there's also homeopathic remedies. There are all sorts of natural remedies. We've used neurofeedback, which a little bit, doctor, you were talking about training the brain. Neurofeedback is a brain training program that is a lot of fun for kids. They play a video game with their brain as it's literally changing it to enhance and allow different parts of the brain to talk to each other. Right. That doesn't require any drugging or anything. There are multiple natural remedies that can be tried, including EFT, EMDR. There are so there is so much out there. Yeah. Diet's a huge part. Diet's a huge part. Diet Removing huge refined part. sugar. Uh, well, I, uh, uh, Lori, I, I go by the science. I know now, you do. I now do too. When, but let me make the point. I'm when a we, when we do science, what that means is there's got to be an independent group of people weighing the quality of the science and that are anonymous and say, is this good? Does this meet rigorous criteria where we're testing something, one thing against another? Now, if you use those standards, that all of society really uses, or you use a placebo, but some careful comparison. But who's what, funding what, those what studies? We, most of it is by the federal government. <laughs> and so that's very, so, yeah. but there are people who feel strongly it's a drug agenda. Well, but the federal yes. government funded the study that showed we stayed, we used mine, your tax dollars. 
That was why we did it that way. And that study, with no industry support, said, golly, up to two years later, kids benefit enormously from these medicines. And a third of kids do better with the therapy. But two thirds did better with the medicine. But when you think about all the things like EMDR out there, I, I don't want to trash anything. Check out the science, because right. you'll hear all kinds of things. Uh, we're, we're out of time. I appreciate all your perspectives. And I think you guys uh, represented yourselves really well and your kids. Thank you for, for being here. I want to thank the audience as well. Thanks for joining the continued conversation here online at AndersonCooper.com. Let us know what you think about today's show. Write your comments below. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.